right. Good morning. Salam. Okay. Wow. This is a Community Matters, and it's, we're going to talk about the Jewish Peace Corps with two young rabbis who are visiting the Hawaiian Islands. Shlochem. Yeah, They're part is. of the <laughs> International Chabad Network, as it were. You got okay. it. And uh, one of them is Re Israel uh, uh, Krasnichansky, who is the son of Itchel, Rabbi Itchel Krasnichansky, a Chabad of Hawaii, who is stationed in, if you will, in Paris or near Paris. That's really something. Um, and then there's Yossi Rottenstrike, who is cousin, cousin. Correct, yes. And they went to school together way back when in New York. Um, and Yossi is stationed in uh, Baltimore. Baltimore, my goodness. We want to talk to you about Baltimore. All right. And they, and they, um, they are part of, uh, at least in uh, Rabbi Itchel Krasnodzhansky's notion, uh, the Jewish Peace Corps. So Israel, what in the world is the Jewish Peace Corps? Hmm? So obviously it's not like part of the official Peace Corps, per se. It's just okay, got it. analogy. <laughs> but it's really, it's um, a subcategory, or is, shall I say, under the auspices of a much greater, uh, huger um, um, network of outreach. The right, outreach outreach program. is the operative word, and also do, doing good for people, helping people. Goodness and kindness, that's basically um, yeah. that's the bottom line. So what, the, what do you do good for people, and how do you help them? So the, uh, the basic, basic, um, basic gist of it is trying to reach out to as many Jews as possible, like I said, it's a Jewish Peace Corps. And that's just to try to bring them just a, one step closer, I would say, to their Jewish roots and their Judaism. So it's not like um, not looking to bring in new members to the tribe or anything like that. Just meet all the members of the tribe as possible, as help many them. as possible, and help them in care for them. All physical, be be there for them. Be, be there, there for them. Support yeah. what they need, and then obviously in the Jewish and the religious sense, try to um, try to uh, try to maybe get a, a good mitzvah, a good deed, laying the tefillin or uh, a short prayer or something like that. But even if we don't make it that far to put late tefillin with them or to uh, do a good deal with them or even do anything Jewish with them. Mission accomplished. If we met, met another Jew and gave him a smile and maybe lifted his day a little and uh, was there for him, then, that's, that's the, then we've done our job. So you're able to do that in, in Paris, in France? Paris has a, an yeah. up-and-down history on anti-Semitism. Yes. How, you know, how does that play? But... In general, the rule, the rule is that a Jew who's proud of his Judaism and stands strong, I'm a Jew no matter what, and I'm not going to be affected or uh, not going to hide my Judaism because someone else has a problem with it. The general rule is that such a Jew is respected. If he respects who he is, then he's respected by other people. So in Paris, the Jewish community is very, very strong, um, strong, uh, a strong body. Yeah. And uh, very, very... Do you go to the Marais? No, never there. Oh, okay. I'm in the issue most of the week. Once a week, we go out to... Uh, Paris and uh, Adelaide, so with the Jews there, and mm. like we do over here. Speak French? Um, um, he said um, uh. <laughs> And how about finding kosher food in Paris? Um, no, it's not a problem. Not, not at all a problem, problem like Hawaii. No, they, they got a lot of food there. Yeah. Now, <laughs> there are a lot of Jewish people there. Although yeah. there are some Jewish people in Paris who want to go back to Israel. They had enough of France. <laughs> yes, so, every Jew should want to go back to Israel, wherever he is, be it Hawaii, be it... Uh, yeah, yeah that, everybody wants to go to Hawaii, don't they? Uh, so I guess the question I have is, you walk down the street, you're always going to wear your religious garb, yeah? This is the way you appear in public, maybe at home too. Um, so you ever, ever get a problem with people in Paris about your outfit? Slight, not, nothing too major, thank God. Um, it says actually, the Talmud relates, that someone who's on his way to uh, do a good deed, no harm could befall him. Since he's, definitely when he's doing the good deed, but even when he's on the way to do the good deed, so the merit of the good deed protects him. So uh, definitely someone who's going to try to spread Judaism and spread the word of God isn't someone who... Uh, well, it does take him. a little courage, I have to say, if you're, when you're in a place that where people may not like you. And so good for you. Good for being courageous. So, Yossi. Yes. Baltimore. Baltimore had been in the news a lot. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing in Baltimore to help people? Right. So again, so first, in the idea of the outreach program is more of an emphasis placed on the adults. So once you graduate the yeshiva system, then is when you dedicate most of your life to doing outreach and to trying to find more Jews and bring them closer. But even in the, so right now we're both still in the studying stage. We're still part of the yeshiva system. 
So then the emphasis is placed on learning Torah, just so you know what to tell the people. You can't just go out there and have, to have anything to say. After all, you are both ordained rabbis, am I right? Uh, on the just way. About. Just on about. the way. Okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> not there yet. But no, so you have to know what to say. You have to know how to say it. So most of the day is spent in the books, learning, studying. However, a portion of the time is set aside to going out, to meeting people on the street. So again, so when I'm in Baltimore, the yeshiva is a very isolated, it's referred to as one of the cities of refuge. There's like such a concept in, such a concept in the Chumash, in the Bible, which explains how if a person, God forbid, whatever, there's certain cities where if a person, God forbid, killed someone by mistake, he can run to in a city of refuge. And these are our physical cities in the land of Israel. Obviously, it's, it's not active until only when the temple stands. Now it's not active. However, the idea of the city of refuge is that it's an isolated place. It's walled, it's walled in. And these people that killed someone uh, by accident, they can go there and be protected from anyone that might try to take revenge. But why the is considered no, so, no, so that's not, so I'm saying the yeshiva in general, this place where you go and study. So forget about the whole killing thing that, that doesn't tie in really to the analogy here. But what I'm trying to say is that it's, it's referred to as a city of refuge. It's a place where you go in, it's, you're kind of disconnected by choice. You're disconnected from reality. You sit down, excuse me, you have the books, you have your teachers, and you have, you have your friends. And in that place, you're so about all the happenings in Baltimore. I can't tell you so much in detail. Obviously, some of it. Some of it and penetrates, but the main focus is just to try to study God's Torah, to try to learn, to try to act like good Jews. And then once a week, we go around to the neighboring places and try to, again, like put filling on some people, just meet them. But the emphasis is always going to be on the learning, on the studying, on the books. Mm. You don't speak French. No. Nah. Not, yet. Not even. <laughs> I really Hebrew. either. See English, Yiddish, and Hebrew, yeah? Yes. In France as well, the language of the yeshiva is Yiddish. The official language is Yiddish. Even though we're in the middle of yeah. France, it's like a known continent, like he's saying. The yeah. yeshiva is a continent yeah, that's very itself. interesting, yeah, yeah. So uh, you brought with you uh, some tefillin. Um, and both of you gentlemen have uh, already said Shacharis, the morning prayer. Correct. Uh, is, is, and you've said Mircha, have you had? No, not yet. No, it's too early for that, after yeah. the show, yeah. Uh, and Ma'ariv is the evening prayer, is it sunset? It's 7 o'clock at Chabad, seven, if you want to join okay, us. Okay, <laughs> We all have our different customs, yeah. Um, and when you do uh, Shacharis, I mean, Ma'ariv, wait. Which Ma one are you referring to? Shacharis, Mincha, Ma'ariv. Exactly. When you do Shacharis, that's when you lay the tefillin, you put the tefillin yes. on. Can you, can you yes, show people sure. what they look like? I think a lot of people have heard yeah. the term, but they don't know exactly right. what uh, oh, sure. a, a tefillin box looks like. Phylactery so, is the word in English. Phylactery, yeah. He yeah, had yeah. more of a chance of that, of some finding someone on the street and telling him tefillin and him knowing what that yeah, is instead of phylactery. <laughs> so, either there are two boxes, and this is just the shell to protect it. The idea is that this one goes on your hand, mm -hmm. goes around. You take your coat off when you, when you put the So, you have to roll up your sleeve. You roll up the sleeve. And there's, a, there's okay. a slot here you stick your hand through. You wrap this string around your hand multiple times. Now, inside, so the important part of this is inside this box over here, it's so it's shot with some animal sinew. It's very slight over here. And inside this box are four parchments. Are four, are, are this box Why is that actually. so much bigger than the ones I had when I was by Mitzvah? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yes. The, the parchment's bigger now? You, there's more yeah. in there? It could be the no, parchment's the same size. It's a professional but, model. Uh, no. It's Ashkenazi all, all, Jews have generally very small, and Chabad have bigger ones. Okay. It's all the same idea. Okay. <laughs> all same same yeah. ones that Moses wore a thousand years ago. <laughs> okay. Go on. No, so the idea is that inside you have, this, you have these scrolls, and inside the scrolls are written very key passages from the, from the Torah, from the Bible, such as, you believe in one God, and that if you fulfill my commandments, and that if you serve me like a proper person and act then it's selected passages not selected yeah, passages yeah, no. correct not the whole no. time. are the passages the same in all of the uh, all tefillin yes all tefillin? yes they are so yes. it's a regular uh, assortment of prayers yeah. mm -hmm. correct okay. and it says so and it's about how god will um god will affect you positively and give you much good as long as you stay 
do to uh, as long as you stay a good person and fulfill. So I'm I'm left-handed. I used to wrap in my left hand. Your right hand. Right hand, because if you're left-handed, you put them on your right. You wrap and with if you're your right left hand. Handed, you put them on your left. You wrap with yes. your left hand if you're left-handed. Of course, you need right your, handed, you, you wrap need with your, your main hand to wrap. So that's why, and it's like seven times you have to wrap. You yeah. got it. I think you put on yesterday. Yeah, about that. Yeah. Wow. Okay, and then you have to wrap them on your finger. You wrap them on all the fingers, and then you wrap around the, yeah. the two fingers and, at the Chabad end. Chabad is custom, just the middle finger. Yeah, and you're really bound up with this. And, and the idea there is that the, that the word uh, shall guide your hand. Well, your hand is guided by, by the word of God. Yeah, Am I right? I think it's placed also the back, the, the strings go all the way down your hand. But the, the back is opposite your heart, there. and one is on your mind. And the and the other filling is on and your they're head. interchangeable, right? Yeah. You can put the hand on. No, 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 the, no, oh, no. They're so different. They're different. Okay. They're different knots. But it's yeah. But they're not. They're not. They're not held back by one another. If you for whatever reason can't put it on your hand, then you can place it on your head. Meaning, even though generally the custom is to place both both on the hand and on the head at the same at the same time, if for whatever reason you can't place it on the hand, maybe you're disabled. Yes. Or someone got a bruise, whatever, right. whatever it should so be. So for whatever yeah. reason that it's painful or you're not able to put it on your hand, then you can just put it on the head. Because a lot of people, they, they assume that the tefillin is like a package deal. If I can't put it on the hand, then I, and then I shouldn't even try to put it on no, the you head. Make your best effort. Yeah. So the truth is that they're two individual mitzvot, and whatever you can do, you can do. You okay, so do. they both have the same prayer inside yeah. in yes. the box. Did you ever take it out? Did you ever look at it? No, not Which scribes. is something you're not supposed to take out. When do you check them? You're supposed to check them check once them. every several years. And, but it's a scribe's job. Like, uh, the scribe writes them. Like scribe the scribe writes them, who checks writes them. the Torah. Yeah. It's the same. So yeah, same idea. Official scribe. Okay. And, and when you put them on, you make a prayer. Correct. What is the prayer? So we do shacharit, which is the whole morning prayers. Oh, it's, it's part of the morning prayer. But when you, yeah. when you put the uh, trillin on, you make a, a special prayer. About so putting them on, right? Yeah. Oh, so it's a make, blessing. Yeah. A blessing. All right. Yeah. yeah. What, is, what does it say in English? Which is, blessed are you, our God, who commanded us and sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to put on the tefillin. It's the, it's the standard blessing for every commandment. Just change the last words. It, blessed, it, is, blessed are you, our God. For this, for that, for this, for that. Yeah. yeah everything. The idea is there's, there's one key idea which lies behind all the mitzvot, all the commandments. Every idea, every mitzvot has their specific idea, like you mentioned before, the tefillin is to is to uh, lead your actions, your hand and your heart and your head in the right way. Every mitzvah has their own idea, but all the mitzvahs have one general idea, which is that it connects us to um, God. Okay. How long has this been going on, Tefillin? Did it go on at the time of the first temple, the second temple? Yeah. And, yeah. Way, way back. Back, then, to, yeah. back to Sinai. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ooh. Like the rest of the Torah. Back to Egypt? No, Egypt was a before after, Sinai. After, after Egypt after and Moses the revelation at Mount Sinai. Right. So. These, some of these prayers came from what Moses took off the Mount, from Mount Sinai. Yeah. But the, the Ten Commandments are in there, I guess. No, not, not the Ten Commandments. Not, the Torah. An example of what's in there. The example of the passage, the key passage, is like the key passage in Jewish life and Jewish tradition is the Shema Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. That's key. Which, that's the passage in Deuteronomy, yeah. which wasn't given by Mount Sinai, but it's a part of the whole Torah. It was a... Uh... Okay. Uh, we're going to take a short break. Uh, and so we can put the trillin back in the bag. Yes. Because it, it makes me nervous to have them on the table. Yeah. Because I want to protect them. They're holy <laughs> items. you like to have them on the hand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we'll come back and I want to ask you guys what you study when you study the Bible. What you study when you study the Torah. And uh, how you study it. I'm really interested in that. Yeah. Okay, it was a short All break. Right. And we'll take the trillin and put them back in the bag. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel? Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs 
every other Monday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about. Human stories about law and life. Aloha. Okay, we're back, we're live, and what we did is we, we fold them up. You have to fold up the thriller in a certain way, wrap the leather thongs around in a certain way. And uh, I learned that uh, the one that goes on your head has, has that written on it. The one that goes on your arm has that written so you don't get confused. Uh, but you can tell anyway, right? You can tell which one it is. Yeah. 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 It's written on the boxes, not on the actual. So. And then I noticed also that you, when you, when, when you handle the villain, you, you give them a little kiss. Like right. you do for the talus. Correct. So, yeah. Or the chichim. Correct. The same thing. It's a, it's a holy object. So you, you show it respect. Okay. So I want to talk about studying and learning. Okay. Because part of Chabad, part of Orthodox Judaism is studying and learning. And I want to know what you study, what you learn, because you do it every day, am I right? Yeah. What's it like? What do you do? So, it's, uh, it's like a, a, a short question, but it encompasses the answer, it encompasses a lot. Like it's you okay. say, it all okay. day, every day. It's okay. Just to um, say, I guess, like making it two basic subcategories, there's the there's the laws, the law aspect, what to do, how to be a good Jew, which that's most basically, most uh, fundamentally the Talmud, studying the Talmud, that takes up most hours of the day. The most hours of the day. Yes. Now, the Talmud is, you have a center part of the page in the Talmud, where the original Talmud from way back, several hundred years ago, several is thousand. written. And then you have commentary around it, and then you have commentary on the commentary, right? I mean, yes. so you have to read it all, right? If you're going to understand it, because it's no, you know, very, very intricate. Yes. Yeah. T talk about it. So uh, yeah, for example, so like you said, it's the Talmud has been the key work of Jewish life, so to speak, from when it was written, dated back approximately two thousand years ago, till today. So obviously, the more that's studied, the more that's learned, there comes more and more depth. So there's constantly commentaries and super commentaries being written on it. So like you said, there's the center page, and then. Around is what's called Rashi, the foremost commentator. Commentator, and on, on the other side is Tosos, the two most foremost commentators. And like you said, it's incredible, incredible depth. For example, an average yeshiva boy will learn Talmud for many, many hours a day. But the key, in the Chabad schools, the key, the key uh, period would be a four-hour session of Talmud study, and the whole year he'll cover about ten pages of Talmud. And he's you not to learn every syllable. He's not uh, sitting around wasting his time. At least that's the hope. Yeah, yeah it's very, very depth. So yeah. That's that's one section, the Talmud. That's quite a that that How big is the Talmud? Around two thousand plus pages, two thousand seven hundred around. With with the commentaries around the outside. Yeah, if they weren't commentaries, it'd be less pages. But there's a standard print, and but excuse me, but it could be learned for a lifetime. One line, one page, you learn for a lifetime, or you could just learn the whole thing. And what did you study uh, yesterday? Yesterday was mm -hmm. Sunday, so you could study Sunday. Yeah, so, so what I studied yesterday actually was more the second aspect I'm getting to. So the first category is Talmud, which that, uh, which that demands more like a yeshiva setting, like a full, in-depth uh, focus. And then the second category is what Chabad, Chassidus, and Chassidim are unique in, which that is the aspect called Chassidut. What is that? The Chassidut is the esoteric and deeper aspects of the Torah. Not to learn the laws so much, but to learn who commanded those That's laws. That's the mysticism part? Mysticism part. It's yeah. not so mystical. It's very understandable and very practical. Yeah. It's not so much about the laws and the intricacies of Jewish life, but who, what is Jewish life and who commanded all this? God and his workings. And, and that his... would be on the outside margin? No, this is totally different book. Totally different book. What do you call that book? This is, it's, it's a category. It's called Hasidut, and there's many, many different... Uh, Hasidut. Okay. Hasidut. So let's go to the commentaries for a minute, Yossi. Mm -hmm. So you read the commentaries. Do you know who wrote them? So, does it say, does the author appear there somewhere? So generally it's all, it's like in an acronym. All these commentaries, their names were, for example, Rashi. So Rashi is an acronym of, with the letters, of Hebrew letters, Resh, Shin, and Yud. And which spell out, if you spell them out 
Shmuley, it's uh, Shlomo Yitzchaki, which is uh, which is what was his name. It's his name. But okay. they basically turned you know his when comp. He lived? Yeah. yeah. How do you know? Is, is it written there? So we have to go outside and research him to find out when he lived, where he lived, all that. So you probably won't find you won't find this in the actual category. But so Rashi, being such a famous and foremost commentary, is one of those things that you grow up with as a child, knowing that he lived in France and when he lived, different stories oh. about his life, and, and so on. And you give on. him respect. You, you, in other words, he's credible. His uh, commentaries are well known because he is well known. Well, the truth is, any it works both ways. Sometimes people aren't. Some people. The truth is, there are some commentaries we don't even know who wrote them. Very rarely, but. Because, but you know it's credible just because what's written there. That it's so, but that's, that's a very small category. Generally, it works both ways. You have great men, great sages, great rabbis who grow, wrote great things. So they can be credited both ways, either because of their stature or because of their writings. But the truth is, the, in truth, you can spend, some people do spend part of their day researching who they're learning, about their lives, different stories about them. That's more of a light learning. It's not just enjoyable to... Read about these and, figures. And it is a and, commentary. It's, so I read the center, or I read the other fellow's commentary, and I would like to make a comment. I would like to enhance knowledge about the ideas in the Talmud. Is that what it is? Um, so it, it's like we do on the show. So you want to make a comment? Make a comment. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, suppose Rabbi Schneerson had an idea. You know, the founder of Chabad uh, had an idea, and he was reading the Talmud one day, and he said, you know, I agree or I disagree with uh, this other fellow who wrote the last commentary or some commentary in the past. I want to go on record about that. So would Rabbi Schneerson start writing in the margins of the Talmud? Or was he too late no. to write in the margins of the Talmud? That, is, that was common practice to write on the margins. That's more like for personal notes. Generally, the general system is like, like everywhere else. You have a thing to say, you write it, you publish it, and the book is kept it's for a book. It's a separate book. Yeah. It's so, not in the Talmud itself. There are only two commentaries which are along the page of the Talmud, gen basic commentaries. And, but everything else, so all the hundreds and different people that had different rabbis which had much to say later, so some of it's printed in the back. But most of them just print their own books, and basically it's a guide. So you have the Talmud in one, one, one side. And then along with the Talmud, you have another side, this commentary. So you're reading the Talmud, then you look at his, what his commentary, what he says, continue reading. So anyone, so same thing nowadays, anyone that has a thought publishes it in his own book, and it can be bought and as a read-along with the Talmud. You know, a, it's an it's a interesting term that I've come familiar with over my life. Is, is if you're Talmudic, if, or if a, a conversation is Talmudic, it usually goes like this. On the one hand, this, and on the other hand, that. And then we got this, then we get that, and it never comes to rest because somebody always has another idea about it. Is this the way it works? You see it that way? Not, not so much in that there's no, no bottom line. There is a bottom line. That's, I guess, like just stereotypical. There's, yeah. there's a lot of times a bottom line. That's Jewish law, what the bottom line is, how to act. The bottom line is the center. No. It's the center of the Talmud book. No, no, no. The, that's the, it? the center no. is just all the conversations. The bottom line was needle, needed out. Generations later, by other. Uh, so it's a living document now. Yeah. Huh? You, you read the Talmud and the commentaries, and it's, it's current. It's, yes, exactly. It's now. Like the whole, exactly. Yeah. It's 2019. Exactly. exactly. Like the whole Torah. What am I supposed to do today? This is, this is applicable to me today. And how should I live my life today? Does it ever get old? I mean, for example, if I wrote about mm, uh, 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 trouble in Baltimore. Okay, mm -hmm. when I and I thought, well, this is related to the Talmud. This, uh, this for me, was a connection between the Talmud and the trouble in Baltimore. Would I write that down? Uh, and wouldn't that get old, you know, in ten years or twenty? It would, but there's something called application. I would take your work and see, wow, this is what he thought about such a case. So let's see my case. How would and how would I apply in my situation in Honolulu? So it's not like Baltimore, but at certain as shared aspects. And let me take what he said about these aspects about, about Baltimore and apply it in the center. So yes, like you said, everything was, there's thousands and thousands of books about what each rap I thought about his specific. Do you have your own copy? Of the Talmud? Not in the office, but yeah. You, you, have, you, you own one. Yeah. And you, you can go study it by yourself or in a group. Usually it's in a group, though, isn't it? So the, the standard way, the accepted way of learning, at least as students, is geared up. And that always... 
that always adds to the first of all to the feeling when you're when you're not just sitting down in a quiet room and just reading a page but rather you're sitting down in front of a friend of yours and you're both trying to figure out it adds much energy and it just makes it a lot more alive read aloud so you read a lot so that's the idea it's I think it's starting to become more accepted in other, actually, you may, may know this, but in South Korea, I know they started learning Talmud, this regular, just non-Jewish education, they started learning Talmud there. Is that in Korean or English or Hebrew? It's, I think they have a Korean translation by now, I don't know. They have it but in, I, in English though, don't they? In yes. All languages. No, there is no translation? No, in all French, Lots English. Of, uh, French, everything, okay, all right. Okay. And Yiddish, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying have, Yiddish yeah. books aren't really prevalent today because no one really yeah. speaks it, but that's where there was a... Uh... Let's shift to the Torah now, because isn't part of being an Orthodox Jew reading the Torah, yes. learning the Torah? The Torah is not as long as, as the Talmud, though. Right? No, but it encapsulates what do, you mean, what do you mean by that? that? What I mean by that is that the Talmud isn't coming to give us a new Torah. It's coming to explain what it says in the Torah. For example, in the Torah it says, you shall buy, well, we just talked about the tefillin. You shall bind them for a sign upon your... Hand and a uh, sign on your head. Oh, the, the what, what does that mean? I don't know what sort of sign, how. So the Talmud comes and explains. There's these black boxes you put, like you were saying, these and these parchments inside. Mm. So the Torah is in one, very condensed, but not that it's a different study. So you, you guys can both read the, the Hebrew without the vowels and everything, right from the Torah. Mm. You can read it aloud, you can read it for meaning, you can translate it on the spot, am I right? Would you like to study yeah. some Torah? <laughs> You didn't bring one with you, and that's okay. Uh, I have. <laughs> and that comes in English, too? Bible, yeah. And the five books of Moses are in the Torah? That is the Torah. It is the Torah. That's the whole thing. The Torah is the all-encompassing word for the five books of Moses. Yeah, yeah. Torah, actually, getting back to what you're saying, that is practical. The translation of Torah is not Bible. I'm saying maybe Bible, but like, it's just as understandable as phylacteries. But the literal translation of the word Torah is lesson. I mean, a practical lesson. The word Torah means lesson. In Hebrew. The word Torah is from the root Hora'ah, which means lesson. Coming to say that, yes, it was written and it was given thousands of years ago. But the lessons are applicable today in Honolulu, Hawaii, in 2019. So if you, if you have the Talmud, it's better to have the Torah nearby or a copy of it so you can go back to the original text yes. and see what they're commenting on. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes. Um, and likewise, uh, if you're reading the Torah, it's good to have the Talmud there. So you can see what people interpreted the words to mean. Yeah. Well, and extending the, them into life. Yeah. There's the commentators on the Torah, which really have took the relevant parts of the Talmud. And that work for you. One goes with the other. Yeah. Like love and marriage. <laughs> so you're, you're going to be ordained soon. How much more study and, um, you know, mission experience you need to have, you guys, before you get to be rabbis? Uh, and can I call you rabbi now, or is it too early for that? Uh. Yeah, whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to call you Rabbi now. Yeah, okay, Rabbi Israel and Rabbi Yossi. Okay, but um, what do you have to do to actually get your wings? So, there is a specific course that you have to take because the Torah is so vast, and it, you can spend your entire lifetime, and you still won't cover everything, or not even nearly everything. So, the rabbi to become a rabbi, there's a specific parts where they target and they say you have to learn this well and so basically the very applicable things the questions that you would be asked as because a rabbi is so in Chabad a rabbi very a lot of it is going out to do different places in the world and just trying to meet Jews there and outreach but the more literal Peace Corps things yeah, too. Well, yes. yeah. but a, the standard rabbi is basically answering questions that people have in Jewish law and Jewish life because the rabbi is generally seen as the more knowledgeable everyone learns Torah, but the rabbi dedicated his life to learning Torah. So he would be the more knowledgeable one to answer different questions on family life and Torah life and so on. So there are specific, so for this course, there are specific questions, there are specific, there's, sorry, there are specific parts of Torah which is targeted. You have to learn this well, for example, different laws about, about kosher, right? A person comes home from the store one day, has a piece of meat, and he wants to know, or at least this is how it was in the shtetl especially, that guy comes home with the chicken, he shechs it, he slaughters it, he has a chicken now, and he wants to know if it's kosher. But there may be something wrong with it. So he goes to the rabbi, and he asks the rabbi if it's okay, if it's kosher or not. And the rabbi would be the one to give the final ruling. So now there's more, not so much applicable the 
watering of the chicken part, but going to knowing what you can buy in a supermarket, let's say if a person is not so familiar with that. Mm -hmm. So he would call up his rabbi and ask the rabbi, or now you can look online, but many, and that's just the general example, but anything that comes up in Jewish life which you need to know, you have to go to the rabbi to figure out. So, these, so this course targets certain things which generally are asked and generally... You get tested? So yes. There is a test. So that's is it oral or written or both? Generally oral. Where is it? Is it in New York? Is it here? Is it anywhere no, else? Not Honolulu. You're not going to find any Honolulu. sort of issue Honolulu. Not Paris either, are you? Um, yeah, no. Maybe, maybe Ma Paris. Major Jewish centers you could find there. Oh, okay, and so the senior rabbis will talk to you and, and quiz you on whether you know the yeah, things you a, need to know. Yeah, it's a, the, uh, what's it called? Numerous, numerous tests. Not so just it's, one. It's a, oh, it's numerous tests, and it takes a while. Yeah. And then you're ordained. Is that, now, an ordained rabbi, does he have to register with the state, or is it just with Chabad? It's not, it's not a public I'll, thing. It's, I don't know. It's just a religious know? thing, yeah. I um, guess I'll find out when yeah. I become one. Okay, yeah, okay, you'll let me know. you have to come back and let me know how it went. When do you guys expect to be ordained? The system is that I'm not rushing to be ordained. I want to learn Torah to be a good Jew. I'm not rushing to become a rabbi. So generally, it's right before you, the, the last year before you get married. That's generally the you time to be through. ordained before you get married. Because that's before you start off your life. That's when you'll do it. Till then you're in yeshiva. You guys haven't started off yet. No. <laughs> that's great. And just one more question. I'm just, I'm, we're out of time, but I'm really, really curious. And so I come to you and I say, Rabbi, I'm having a personal problem. I'm having a crisis. It may be a family crisis, maybe somebody in my family. It may be a personal crisis, you know, the bad time I'm having. Uh, it may be a health crisis. Uh, could you give me advice? Would you be prepared to give me advice? Would you give me wisdom about that? It's not religious, it's personal. What do you do? So, you're correct, it's not religious, but there's obviously the religious view on everything. There's religious, there's religious uh, um, traditions, and then there's life and the religious out, outlook on it. So There is religious advice for everything. Exactly. Yes. So you would give me the religious advice. So, would, I would need an, I can't, I'm not gonna say I know everything, only a fool would say that. Yeah. But what I would try to do is not give you my own advice, but give you the advice of primarily Rabbi Schneerson, the Lubao Trevi, and his. So he has responsa, actually. His responsa, which they're still not finished. It, it, they're, reading, they're reading the 30th volume of his responsa, and they're halfway done. And there, it covers all aspects of, Jew, of life with the Jewish perspective, with the godly perspective. You have to be a certain kind of person to be willing to hear the troubles of others. Yeah. Yes, I guess so. Generally, a kind person wants to help yeah. out his friend. It's part, it's part of being a rabbi, isn't it? Part of being human to help out another person. Part of being human, yeah, caring for each other, yeah. Well, you guys are great. I'm so glad to meet you. I have one last question, and we'll close this down. This is, you always wear those hats. Do you have a yarmulke on, under the hat? Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> I should have known. That's part of the religious... Beautiful. And it's generally for praying. You're standing for God. You should look presentable. So, but from praying, it sort of like evolutionized into that. One goes with the other. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Israel. Thank you. Rabbi Thank Israel, you, Rabbi Yossi. Thank you. So Thank you, nice to meet you guys Likewise. and talk to you. So, so much fun. So many things to learn. Yes. The pleasure was ours. Thank uh, you. Uh, I hope time. we do it again. Shulchim. Shulchim. Emesis. Yeah. Bringing God's, God's, God's word to the world. That's the idea. Yeah.